So before we commence the construction of the tripod assembly, there's a couple of things we need to do first. First, we need to determine the, the approximate direction of the satellite using the compass that's provided in the toolkit. The second thing we need to do once we've determined the orientation of the tripod uh, is to ensure that we have a clear line of sight to the satellite so there's no obstruction like trees or buildings that could inhibit um, being able to acquire the satellite. So once we've done that, uh, we'll start putting together the tripod. Taking the tripod base, uh, we need to make sure that we have the, the front leg oriented in the direction of the satellite. We can use either of the two legs. The one with this bracket is for the PIM, so it will be one of the, the rear legs. And these just simply slide into the recess. The next job is using, one, using the six wing nuts that are provided in the toolkit um, to loosely uh, place in the six points around the tripod to hold the legs in. Okay, now that we have the wig nuts in place, uh, the next step is to use the turnbuckle tension straps uh, placed uh, on the eyes on the bottom of the legs in order to help stabilise the tripod. The turnbuckle strap is pretty simple. It has a, a, a locking carabiner uh, at each end uh, that we simply place through the eyes uh, on the legs of the tripod. Now the final step in this process is to tension the turnbuckles um, simply by um, screwing, the, screwing the buckle until they're tight. With this operation complete, we now tighten up the wing nuts. Okay, so now we're almost ready uh, to start uh, placing the antenna on the top of the unit. There's a couple more things we need to do before we start. Depending on the type of ground that you're located on, uh, you will need to stabilise or ballast the tripod and there's a couple of options to do that. Uh, the kit provides a number of stakes if you're on soft ground uh, so that you can anchor it uh, through the holes uh, in the tripod pads. Another option, uh, if you're unable to do it, uh, like on this sort of ground, uh, you have uh, sandbags or water bags that you can place over the tension straps to keep it in position. The next job we need to do um, before we place the uh, aperture uh, on the tripod is to ensure that it's level and this will be important uh, when it comes time uh, to do the, the acquisition step. The terminal has a spirit level uh, located uh, on the bottom of the tripod base and what we simply do uh, is use the screws on each of the three legs uh, to get the bubble into the centre position. Okay, the tripod is now ready to receive the backing assembly. Okay, we're now ready uh, for the tripod to receive the backing struct structure for the antenna. Um, within the kit, uh, you'll need a couple of things. Uh, there's a crank uh, for the elevation screw that just slips on here. And you also need the spanner uh, that's provided in the kit uh, to be able to tighten the, the collar onto the um, tripod. So it's simply just place the backing unit onto the tripod as far as it can go, uh, orient it uh, roughly in the direction uh, of the satellite uh, and then you can just, uh, just tension up the, the collar slightly.
not too tight because we may, we'll probably need to move it later. The next step is for us to place the feed boom in position and to do that you need the actual feed boom assembly itself and four of the wing nuts. There's a little bit of a trick uh, with getting the feed boom on. You notice there's a couple of uh, keying recesses on the bottom uh, and you need to make sure that they're received uh, right at the base of the unit uh, and slid right in place so that you'll be able to get the wing nuts done up. At this point we can tighten these right up. We're now ready to place the reflector onto the backing structure. What you'll need for this is the reflector itself. Uh, you need five uh, of the keyed bolts uh, and five of the nuts. The first thing we want to do uh, is place um, the first bolt uh, and nut in the top screw because this is going to help us put the reflector in position without sliding off uh, while we uh, align the rest. So I've already done that. And we simply slide it down into position uh, and now uh, we can place the rest of the uh, bolts into position. The last task here uh, is to put the nuts on uh, and uh, tension them all up. Okay, the next step is for us to place the transceiver onto the boom. There's a couple of things to say about the transceiver. Uh, this is actually a specially made transceiver uh, for Global Express. It's 5 watt, uh, it supports Imarsat's uh, one touch commissioning process. When actually placing the transceiver on, uh, you're going to need uh, four of the hexagonal screws uh, and in terms of how you orient the position uh, you need to make sure uh, that you place it label side down and you also just need to take care uh, with the feed horn as this is a, uh, a sensitive part of the transceiver itself. So uh, we simply uh, position the transceiver uh, over the receiving holes uh, and hand tighten uh, the screws into position. So now we're ready to place the cable harness into position. Um, what you'll need for this is the cable harness and four of the small hexagonal screws in order to attach the, the PLS or the Paradigm uh, Location sensor, in, sensor into position. So just lay the cable loom out and what we'll do is we'll attach the cables first which will govern where the, the PLS is actually positioned. Um, so th there's three cables here um, you have the red, uh, which is transmit, uh, the green, uh, which is receive, and you also have the power and control cable, uh, which is this large amphenol connector. On the back of the transceiver, they're actually colour coded as well to make sure you put the, the right um, transmit uh, and receive cables on the correct connector.
Okay, we can now place the PLS into position. Uh, you'll notice there are four screw holes uh, to receive that. And using the smaller uh, of the two Allen keys that are provided in the kit uh, to attach it. Now the PLS is an important unit uh, as it provides information uh, on the GPS location uh, to the Paradigm Interface module uh, and also provides information uh, on the elevation and azimuth pointing uh, to, to assist with the pointing process. We're now ready to place in position uh, the Paradigm Interface module or the PIM. Just a few words on the PIM. Uh, this is a, a Paradigm's advanced uh, integration of the Global Express iDirect velocity core module. Uh, that's really the brains of the system uh, that provides the connectivity to the network. A couple of things to note with the PIM. On the top side uh, we have the cable connectors that come from the actual antenna itself uh, and on the base of the unit uh, we have the user connectivity side. So we have a number of Ethernet and management ports and also an AC and a DC power. You only need to be connected to either AC or DC, not both at the same time. Uh, on the top of the unit, uh, we also have the graphical user interface, uh, which we'll use through the, the pointing uh, process. On the back side, uh, I've already pre-positioned a number of wing nuts, uh, which will help place the PIM uh, into its position. So placing it into position, uh, the bracket's in place, and it's a simple uh, key, uh, key in system uh, to drop into place. and we simply uh, tension up the wing nuts. Okay, we're now ready to attach the final cables. Uh, you notice that I've already uh, attached the cable uh, to the feed boom. There's a number of Velcro uh, pieces in the kit um, so that you can just hold the cable in, into place. I've also looped it uh, around the tripod base um, just, to, uh, just to keep it neat uh, and, uh, and out of the way. So uh, the cables uh, that we have on here, um, again, uh, another um, green receive cable uh, and red transmit cable. Uh, we also have the connector for the PLS uh, and the, uh, the monitor control cable going to the buck. Okay, uh, so that concludes uh, the assembly process. As you can see, uh, it's a pretty simple job uh, as a single person assembly, uh, and we're now ready to go on to the pointing operation.